Alright, hey guys, it's me, me, and we're going to be doing Vision 2-1 of Klonoa Wii. Well, let's go ahead and begin. I turned the graphic filter off because from what I found out, the graphic filter, all it does is make it a little bit more blurry around the edges. So if you're getting too much of a problem with jaggies and a large screen, well, it actually makes it a little bit more blurry around the edges so you don't have to worry about that. However, you can tell the graphics are actually a lot clearer and stuff when you actually turn that off. So that's what I go ahead and do. More than likely, you're not really watching this on a big screen anyway. Well, I don't know. I've apparently, apparently, three percent of my viewers watch this on a TV. So I'm gonna cater to the other 97 percent, unfortunately, who are watching this on a computer monitor or a tablet. In which case, it's even a worse situation. Anyway, moving on, you'll see that little guy in the background which you cannot affect. You'll, who's actually shooting spikes at you. You cannot hurt him yet. Either way, if you float up here. With these little propeller guys, just float up there, and you can get a little heart, in case you need it for a reason. Grab this little blue gem here, and you'll see these guys actually flip around on like a little acrobatic type thing. So now you just wait for this one to grab this. Ah! No! Darn it. Let's try this again. Alright, float up there. Alright, come on. There we go. And we got ourselves our first instrument piece. I don't need to grab that anymore. I'll grab you so you don't throw any more spikes at me. And now we got a checkpoint in case you ever need that, which you don't. Now if you grab this, you can actually hit him in the background there, so you can actually get rid of him real quickly. Grab these gems, jump across here. Now, you can either take the bottom path or you can take the top path. Actually, you have to take the top path, but I'm going to go ahead and break that and get another a little treasure piece right there. Instrument piece, rather. Whatever. Now, you will also see this little guy right here waiting. If you block the, if you break that, grab these gems, throw him, then throw it there, you can also get two of these. So there we go, got double the gems of that big guy. So that's a good way of doing that there. Now, before you head over to the right here, let's head over to the left. There's a very good reason for this. And as you notice, the actual shift changes, the actual viewing aspect. You cannot hit these guys when they're in their shell, you can only hit them when they're like that. Otherwise, you're just going to be hitting them and annoying yourself. Now these propeller guys, you can actually grab these, get an extra life there, throw that for the little timer, and then throw it right across over there, and you get another treasure piece. You can't do much else besides that, so let's head back in here. Just want the real point to actually fight these guys, head back down here, and the perspective changes once again back to the way it was before. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to wait to actually grab one of these guys real quick. And you'll see why, if I do a little jump here, you can actually triple jump that way. If you actually grab an enemy, jump off, and then grab another enemy, you can actually jump again like that. Technically, you're not supposed to learn that until later, but I decided to show it off now to get those gems. Because like I said, I'm going to aim for the 150, but I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to get it each time. I'm not going to try for that. Hmm, there seems to be a door here with a key on it, but we haven't found a key anywhere. Let's head back. Da -na -na -na. Now I can open this door here. And continue through. Hooray! Of course, you'll see a little timer there. So I'm going to grab an enemy right here. Double jump up. Hit that. There we go. I need health. How did I lose so much health already? I don't understand. Oh well, not too big of a deal. You get 10 life points in this game. Apparently, in the original Kanoa, you actually only have 5 because the hearts you actually have there don't constantly lose each time. In Klonoa 2, I think it's down to three hearts you have, so it's a little bit harder. In fact, Klonoa 2, in my opinion, is a lot harder than Klonoa 1, and substantially easy, uh, sub substantially harder 
than Klino than uh, Klonoa Wii. Now, granted, there is a little thing that's in Klonoa Wii that's not in the previous games, or not in the that's only in the remake. We'll get to that later, and that kind of makes up for lack of difficulty. But we'll get there when we get there. Anyway, when I grab one of these guys and hit this little egg, there you can actually restore your health. And the other one that's flipping around there, if you hit it, you actually get another instrument piece there. Uh, it's actually more like a flower. I'm not really sure. It's a, maybe it's a bell. Maybe that's just an odd looking bell. That's what I'm going to go for. Probably guess. Grab those gems up there. Grab this little spiky rabbit thingy. Hit that. And we got another key. Hooray! And just like they do in every other game ever, the keys only work once for some reason because apparently they get destroyed as soon as you use them. At least in Luigi's Mansion 2 it made sense because you actually saw the key disappear as he used it. But that's like the only key I guess is in the second kind of like a sparkle of it going away too. But anyway, all that aside, I'm going to grab this guy and kill him. Actually, that was a bad idea. I should have waited for him to respawn over here. Hit that, get some gems, and if I wait one more time and grab another one, wait for him, grab him, jump on this leaf, wait till you fall down, and you get another treasure piece right there, or instrument piece, whatever. Alright, let's see if I can do this properly. I decided to double jump there just in case, because I wasn't sure if I was going to actually be able to do this properly. No! Slip. Uh, let's try this again. I recommend grabbing one of these guys for uh, cover because if they drop on you, it actually counts as a hit. And I should have double jumped. Shouldn't have double jumped there. For some reason, the enemies are impervious to these, but you are not. I don't know how that works. And if you notice, they only hit inside the gaps currently. Either way, hit that little timer there to, for the checkpoint so you can actually save the one you actually got. Like I said before, you're not really going to so much die from actual enemy damage. More than likely, you're going to die from falling into a pit. This is just a uh, small case of that happening, but it gets worse. Trust me. In the later stages, you are going to fall into pits a lot. So it starts off quite simple and quite easy, but it only improves from there. Uh, I'm not even sure if you actually get the gold thing for these guys, so if you could be quick enough for that. Maybe you can. I don't know. But either way, did I get all the, did I get all the gem pieces here? I did. Alright, so I just wanted to make sure of that. Oh, are you two trying to cross here too? Yes, if that's okay. Unfortunately, the fairy tree has withered and there's no way to get across. I guess we can't go any further. Thanks for telling us. Who are you anyway? I am a royal soldier from Chuckpot, the Water Kingdom. I was on my way to see the chiefess of Forlock, on official business for the kingdom. Wait a minute, are you saying something happened in Jugpot too? No, I didn't say anything like that. Oh, I get it. It's something so bad you can't talk about it. <sighs> I just thought that with all her knowledge, the chiefess might be able to do something to restore the king. What's wrong with the king? King is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong at all. This place is dangerous for children. You should go home. This sounds suspicious. I wonder if Gaudius and Joker are involved. Well, we can't go any further here. Do you want to try going to Jugpot? Sure. Let's go. Let's go ahead and save our progress, of course. I really should set this to autosave at some point for the fact that I'm actually... Well, I guess suppose if a recording goes wrong, I could decide to not save for whatever reason. So therefore, autosave will be annoying if a recording goes wrong. Anyway, in fact, that's probably why I turned it off in the first place. Oh, it looks like I did get 150 there. I guess 150 is the max amount of gems you can get in any level if you get all the gems you could possibly get. But uh, either way, let's actually head over to Vision 2-2 now. Come on, let's go. I love the music for this particular level. I love it a lot, actually. It's very, very peaceful in my opinion. 
Either way, grab these little gems here. There's not really, you would think with that ring of gems there would be something else there, like maybe a hidden uh, piece of something. I don't know, but either way. Alright, so yeah, the water's actually flowing upwards, and that's kind of interesting about this game here. Despite how uh, short the stage, despite the, like, each stage is, you know, even though the worlds are short, there's like a little mini cutscene in between each stage, which I think is kind of neat that they actually took the time to do that. But either way, if you grab this guy here, jump up, uh, got it. There's actually an instrument piece there, if that's even an instrument. Maybe it's just, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, if anything, a shell, maybe? Maybe, they're, maybe these aren't even instrument pieces, I'm just calling it something different completely. I'm surprised I didn't get hit by that, but now you will not be able to hit me at all. Haha, -ha. you die. Anyway, maybe they're just trapped villagers. Maybe that's what they are, because I'm saving the villagers, so... Yeah, I think that's what they are. I think they're actually villagers, not instrument pieces. I don't know. I may have just called something wrong the entire time. Now, there's nothing really over here besides gems, so if you're going, one, if you're going for 150 gems, you have to grab those. I'll just wait on this little ball right here. Just wait. Wait a second. I was supposed to... Ah! Alright, I'm gonna have to grab something else and come back here. So I'm gonna grab... I'm gonna grab you. Okay, that didn't work. Stop. Okay. Uh, can I go back at all? I'm gonna try to go back. Alright. Now if you grab this guy and jump on here, you have to wait for a little orb banjo thing. I'm not even sure what this even is. A balloon platform? Something like that. You wait, you just grab him, go up here, wait for him to go across. You get three blue gems, you get an extra life, and you get a hidden, uh, a trapped villager. There we go. So we have all three of those things there, which is actually very helpful in every regard. But if you jump across these, grab that, checkpoint, we're on our way. So you jump up here, fall down, and you go in here, you have ourselves another hidden villager piece right there. Hidden villager piece. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And as soon as you get out of that cave, he actually jumps off and goes back in that one. I guess his only sole purpose is actually block you from going anywhere. Unfortunately, he failed miserably. Poor him. Either way, I'm going to grab him. Which I get boosted up here. Then make a double jump. And grab the little alarm clock there. Now, this could be tricky here. Uh, how do I do this? Forget it. I'm already messed up. I'm not going to get 150 gems. Forget it. Not worth it. Alright, let me, let me try this again. Let me see if I can do it this time. If I grab him, jump up. There we go. That's how I do it. That's how I get that gem. And since I already died, well, why not? Of course, you can't get these golden. That would be impossible. I think I might have already messed up with the gems anyway. So I don't know why I'm actually trying to get that one for. Who knows? Maybe that was the only first time I messed up and I just don't remember. I honestly don't remember actually thinking about it. But the next part, I'm going to go ahead and mess up on regardless. Because getting all the gems in this next area is a complete pain if you're going for them. Hit that alarm clock there for a checkpoint in case you want to kill yourself multiple times trying to go for all the gems. But if you go here and then break that... You'll get to restore your health back to full in case you lost any health. Now you want to go to the left here first before you go down. If you can't tell if there's already a hidden villager there, or a trapped villager, well, that's your own fault. Anyway, break that there. You didn't have to jump over there, so you had to say we only have one more left. So jump up there, and we'll head on continue now. This is a very pretty area, I must say. I really, I really, like, the, really like the scenery here. The music, the scenery, the location. I, I just like it overall a lot. It's very nice. Now, there's actually a blue gem there. Let's grab this guy. Get these gems. Uh, this next part's gonna be annoying to try and get all the gems on. I always fail at this part. Now, this first part's easy, but it gets it gets substantially harder as it goes on. Like this. 
Anyone could do this. This is child's play. Watch me mess up somehow on this. Keep on sliding. There. Alright. But maybe it's the next part, not this part here. Alright. Now what we want to do for here. Stun him. Nope, he's too far away. It's not going to work. Going to have to wait for him to come back. And then stun him again. So grab him. Jump up. Double jump there. Grab these gems. Get that piece right there. Go ahead. Now we have all of them. So now what we can do is here is jump out of here and continue on. Let's see if I get the rest of the gems here properly. I don't think I... You can't take an enemy in there, so don't even try it. You actually just want to, like, knock him up into a corner, and I still got hit, even after doing that. Congratulations, self. Hit that alarm clock here. Alright. Here we go. I'm going to try to get all the gems. I might have already messed up. Ah! Uh, nope, nope, not gonna work. You have to, like, double jump with him and actually grab the gems that are up there. But I messed up. Oh, well. At least we got all the hidden villagers. I hear someone crying. Someone is See, now here's the part I was stuck on for a while, because I didn't realize I could actually, hit, at this point, I, since I didn't read the signs, I didn't know I could actually hit that in the background. I kept on trying to do this, like, what do I do? Why can't I hit the switch? I'm so confused. What do I do? Until I realized you could actually face, and then hit the switch there. Uh, so we're going to be facing Milo Dick here. No, seriously. Evil Seedoff and Evil Pamela. Apparently, this fight was nerfed substantially in the Wii version. And I believe in the PS1 version, there are actually hidden... There are actually uh, bottomless pits here for you to actually get hit by. But what we want to do, every so often, Evil Seedoff's going to go ahead and jump on one of these spiked balls as you go near him. You kind of jump over him and grab him and watch out for Evil Pamela to actually charge in at you. So, yeah, this... This uh, battle's a lot easier because there aren't any bottomless pits in this stage. And you only have 10 health versus just 3, so therefore it's a lot easier in multiple stages. You still need to hit him 4 times, but even still, still completely nerfed. But, I mean, he doesn't change up his attack pattern at all. They just do the same exact thing, or so often they can actually shoot up 
water spouts actually create bubbles like that. I can't jump over him properly. Darn it! <sighs> Crap. Oh, you just do that anyway. That was just, uh... Okay, well, apparently I could just wait for him to actually fly over there if I want to do that. Okay. Granted, I haven't had too much practice on here, but either way, those bubbles can damage you and actually pop up and if you actually are holding an enemy or something, it'll actually damage it that way. I'll just wait for you to come over here and grab you. Ah, what? What happened there? I don't even understand. I... Maybe I hit the wrong button. I think, oh yeah, I did double jump instead of actually. Okay, well, I'm messing up terribly on this fight, even though I'm saying it's actually a little easier, but whatever. That's just, uh, that's just what happens, I guess. How does, seriously, why am I doing so terribly? All right. I, I didn't even get it once in my practice run. Why am I, t why does this always happen? Oh, well. Now he does look like he speeds up things a little bit, and Pamela could actually block, actually bust right through one of those spiked balls. So not even, not, they don't even damage him at all. All right, or her rather. There we go. Vision two two cleared, and I almost somehow killed myself in that fight. Wow. Okay. You gotta love Corral. <laughs> she's she's just so cute. I, I don't know. I just I just love hearing that little voice that it talks in. Cur anyway, come on, go ahead and save. And that's it for World Two. Yep, Vision Two also consisted of only two stages. So next time in my Let's Play, we'll be going into World Vision Three One. So see you guys then.